Now, Cadence Design and Synopsys, they are electronic design automation softwares. So they help companies automate the chip design process. Before I go any further, let me say NVIDIA has made some mentions of using AI to actually design their own chips. So I do have a bit of concern for disruption to this sector in the future. That being said, Cadence has kind of put those concerns to bed for a bit because they just had a great earnings report and their stock was way up. I want to say 17% in the day or two after earnings. So they had a great earnings report. It looks like they're doing really well with the AI build out and their and their revenue from system design and analysis was up 47% year over year. You know, when you're looking at revenue for any segment in a business up 47% year over year, you see something is starting to move and shake there. What's, an, what's another one you like about Cadence Design in general and their main source of revenue? Is it this, what I'm hearing is just the automation design process of these chips and that's how they make the main source of the revenue? Or what, what else? What's something else you like about the company regarding their financials? Well, so they used to just focus on the software to help chips. Sorry, the software to help companies make chips. But now they're kind of designing chips themselves. They said, hey, look, this software we made is really good for designing chips. Let's design some chips ourselves. And in doing that, they also have intellectual property that they can sell licenses to. So they actually have a pretty well diversified business. If you listen to their earnings call, they go through and it's like 10% in this, 10% in this, 10% in this. And it's it's not like one of those companies where, you know, 85%, not to mention ASML, but like 85% of them, uh, 85% of their business is just, you know, selling one or two machines. And maybe a huge percentage of that is selling to China. So I feel like they're not at risk as much as some of these other AI adjacent businesses. But it's important to understand the difference between Synopsys and Cadence Design. So Cadence Design has long been the leader in software for designing analog chips. And Synopsys has long been the leader in design for digital chips. But Cadence has moved into digital chip design, and they're doing a lot better in that. So we can say pretty clearly that Cadence and Synopsys is pretty much on the market. There is one other small player, I believe it is a segment of Siemens. And they're a smaller player. So Cadence and Synopsys is pretty much on this market. So if you wanted to have good exposure to the market, you could buy a little of both. You don't necessarily have to go all in on Cadence, but Cadence is the one that just blew out earnings. Yeah, so and another question I'd have is, so what do they do better than Synopsys? And the reason I want to ask you that question first, then I'm going to follow up with a different follow-up question in regards to critique um, and trying to you convince me to be a buyer of CDNS of, of Cadence Design right now. Well, so they do own 80% of the market in analog chips. So that's kind of a market that Synopsys doesn't have as much in. So they pretty much have a monopoly in the design of analog chips. We know that analog chips are more basic chips, like let's say a lot of the chips in your car are analog chips. Chip in a microwave is an analog chip. If you have an electric toothbrush, that's probably an analog chip. So more basic chips, they have 80% of that market. That's almost a monopoly. And what I would say is they, they've been an active acquirer. So they're acquiring other companies. They're trying to return 50% of um, cash flow to investors in the form of stock buybacks. Uh, their margins are around 40%. So 30 to 40% for their margins, whether we're talking about gap or non-gap. Um, so they just in the end, what it comes down to me is the year over year revenue growth. And they're looking at 14% year over year revenue growth. So when I see mid-teens, upper-teens, year-over-year revenue growth, that's a company I'm interested in owning. Um, because we know that, you know, we know that in the end, when a company is finished growing, you're more looking at cash flow to see if that company is a good value and then how they return that cash flow through buybacks, dividends, whatever. But early on, you're really looking for revenue growth. So for me, this company has the revenue growth figure that I'm looking for. And so it's something that I want to own. Yeah. So just for, I always say this, but a couple of basics just out there. I really like the website macro trends. Um, it gives you a good picture. This isn't a new company. You can actually look at a company picture uh, for cadence design over a 10 year period. And what James is alluding to is talking to is you can get on macro trends, you can hit CDNS and you can hit revenue. And it has an excellent chart for revenue growth over the last 10 years and quarterly revenue growth. It's just consistently going like this as well as EPS, their profit margins are excellent. 
my financials at this company look really good. Not only does it look good in the last two or three quarters, it looks good over a period of 10 years. So one of the first things I do is I, I love to check basically past history, past performance or past history and past performance is the, one of the best predictors, in my opinion, of the, of the next year's performance. And so that's, that's step one. Step two is then I like to ask, ask myself, is this company going to be around and utilized and what product are they selling that is an, that people are going to use or other companies are going to use in five years? Okay. I like five years. I don't like 10 years for me. That's just five because I, I, especially with, um, design companies, something like CDNS does with, with the competitors it has, I don't want to look out 10 years, but for me, five, I think that's a sweet spot. Those are the two questions I ask myself. Um, however, my biggest critique of CDNS, so I am currently a holder of CDNS. I'm not a buyer. And the reason is their PDE. I think they're overvalued, number one. Number two, they've already hit their price target for me. Now, I like the technical analysis. However, justify to me a PE of 50. Well, I can justify it by, first of all, admitting a mistake. A moment ago, I talked about their year-over-year revenue growth at 14%, but it's actually not 14%, it's 19%. So their CAGR, their expected annual growth rate for the coming 10 years is 14% per year. But from last year to this year, their revenue grew at 19%. So there's your justification. 19% revenue growth year over year is essentially the, and, and high margins. Then justify it. Just justify that. And so you're, you mentioned Synopsys as a com- competitor. Synopsys PE is 39 um, and CDNS's PE is 46. So if you're trying to buy a better value in a particular company, why not buy Synopsys and not CDNS? Well, so what is what are you seeing as the P ratio for Cadence Design right now? 46. That's past. I'm looking at the 12 year P TTM. Yeah. So I think this this earnings report that we just had might change the numbers a little bit. So what I like to do, I like to look, look at a forward P and then you kind of have to give it a day or two for it to shake out. Just doing, let's just say for the year high side, it's six, right? EPS for the year turns out to be six. Um, six times 50 is 300. So if you give them a PE of around 50, they're already at 300. I just think for me, they've already hit their price target. And so that's why I think they're trading where they are. Now, I, let me say that I am a holder of CDNS. I'm not a buyer currently. However, if you may be looking out five years, this is potentially a company that you'd want to have in your portfolio. Um, I'm just saying that my particular style of trading sometimes is buy a company at a lower evaluation with a price target and some room to grow. For example, you and I have debated Amazon multiple times, and I thought Amazon at $160 a share was a steal. A steal when my price target from Amazon was anywhere between $220 to $250. So right now Amazon's trading at 200. So if I'm if I'm looking at buying CDNS versus Amazon, I'm buying Amazon right now because I think Amazon has another 20 to 50 dollars a share to go. I think CDNS a little bit overvalued. I'm not saying it greatly overvalued, but a little bit overvalued based on the current PE. Okay. So a few things there. So first of all, Amazon is a 2 billion dollar market cap company and um I meant to say two trillion. Amazon is a two. Wait, am I saying this? I'm saying this wrong. Six hundred billion of revenue. Six hundred billion of revenue for the year. Six hundred billion of revenue. We talked about that before, and AWS growth is substantial. So Amazon is a two trillion. I'm getting confused with my billions and trillions today. Amazon is a two trillion dollar market cap company, whereas Cadence Design is a seventy seven billion dollar market cap company. So just drastic difference in the sizes of these companies. I will say in general, it's easier for a $77 billion market cap company to grow than it is for a $2 trillion market cap company to grow. Like, But let me just get back to a few things you said. So we have consistently made a mistake on the issue of PD ratios. So on this show, we have repeatedly said, hey, this company has a PE ratio that's on the high end right now we're not going to buy it right now because of that. So if you listen to any show on NBC, you're going to learn very, very quickly that valuations are not a timing tool. So they say this almost every single day on CNBC, 
valuation is not a market timing tool. It's not a timing tool for a specific stock or for the market as a whole. So you'll hear them say on CNBC, oh, the overall PE for the S&P is 21 right now. Market, the stocks are expensive. And then the person on the other side will immediately come back and say, oh, yes, but valuations are not a market timing tool. Valuations are never a timing tool. They're the worst. They're literally the worst timing tool that data can show us exists. So you cannot look at a PE ratio and not buy a stock for that reason. That's pretty much foul play. You just can't do that. What I would propose as a better thing to do would be to look at three things. Look at the PE, sure, but then look at two other things and then make your decision. Margins and year-over-year -year revenue growth. The year-over-year -year revenue growth and the margins actually decide where that PE is going to be. So for a company, and by the way, the forward PE of Cadence Design is somewhere between 39 and 41, depending on which analyst you believe. So that 39 to 41 as a forward PE for Cadence Design is higher than 21 as an average for S&P because of this 19% year-over-year revenue growth and it's 40% margins. A lot of companies with lower PEs have margins around, I don't know, somewhere between five and 20%. A lot of companies with lower PEs have revenue growth, I don't know, around five to 10% year over year. So you have to consider those things. You're paying for higher year over year revenue growth and you're paying for higher margins. So the PE is probably right where it should be for Cadence Design. It's not expensive. And even if it was, that's not a timing tool for when you decide to buy a stock. <laughs>